Nikolai, you know that on the back end of the core algebraic function is a Greek letter epsilon for uncertainty. What is the level of uncertainty your sovereign wealth fund sees as you drift to 2023? Well, I would say it's a continuation of the uncertainty we've seen for um, for a year or so now. Uh, it consists of uh, the inflation, the energy prices, uh, and the geopolitics. And so it's a continuation of what we've seen for some time. Well, with the, the, the situation that we're in leads to diversification. You people are, to use an American phrase, sir, ginormous. How do you diversify or choose bets given this uncertainty? Well, first of all, we have a very long-term view on what we do. So we, um, you know, invest with a kind of a, ge a generation hat on. We uh, spread over investments uh, across the world. We are um, we have ownership in 9,000 companies across the world. We have uh, both equities and bonds and real estate. So well-diversified portfolio for the long term. What do you think of the American growth technology companies? Are you overweighting them? Do you own too much of them? I know the Swiss National Bank has a little bit of Apple as well, but the, is there the opportunity there in the tumult to reaffirm large cap growth? Well, these companies are, of course, uh, uh, very, very big parts of the index, and so we would have big holdings in these companies. Uh, the U.S. tech companies would typically be amongst our top 10 holdings, and, and we continue to think they are well positioned. And clearly, we have seen a bit of a recovery in the equity markets in recent weeks. Nikolai, there is a bet on the part of the markets that we're going to see a more dovish tilt from Federal Reserve. How are you positioning potentially for Fed policy, and how ultimately do you think they will react? How does that inform your decision making going forward? Well, it's a, that's a really, really tough one. We uh, came into this year with, uh, with some underweight in shares and, and uh, you know, a less risky bond portfolio. We've taken off some of that underweight, but uh, we remain uh, slightly cautious on the outlook here. Uh, you know, clearly markets don't go down in a straight line, and, and we are uncertain uh, in terms of um, whether we've seen a bit of a bottoming here or, or whether we'll see a continuation of, that, of the tough market. And of course, in addition to the monetary policy picture, there's a number of risks that the market has to weigh as well, including the ongoing war in Ukraine, which is now approaching six months. Have you come to any decisions around strategies of what your end game with your Russian assets is? Well, um, when it comes to the Russian assets, we have been uh, instructed by uh, by the government to to exit these for the time being. They they don't really trade, and also we can't be certain about where they where they end up. So um, so they are still frozen, and we um, we haven't um, sold them yet. Nikolai, I'd like you to step away from the huge mass and the different responsibilities you have with your sovereign wealth fund and look at the heritage you have of hedge funds. It has been an absolute battle for hedge funds in timing the market. Obviously, they've got a much more shorter term mandate than what you have now. And then there's the question of long short and the different formulas are that. Is the alternative investment game over? Is the two and 20 game over? <laughs> well, it's a tough one to say. I mean, uh, it's over for me personally in that I now yes. work for the Southern Wealth Fund. But um, no, it's, uh, it's it's difficult to say. I mean, the, the returns from that asset class goes up and down. Um, for the moment, they are having a tough time. They have previously bounced back from these type of situations. But uh, but I, ha I haven't really got a strong mm -hmm. view on this. I must ask, Nikolai, uh, the view from Oslo of the rest of continental Europe. I've been working through the morning on natural gas equivalencies in dollar and in Brent crude barrels that directly involves Norway. Your comments on how Norway and your investment fund will withstand what we're seeing in hydrocarbon prices. Yeah. Um, now, uh, energy prices are high, gas prices are high, uh, but unfortunately, for some sad reasons, the the result is that we have big inflows into the fund, and we have big inflows into the fund at a time where uh, bonds and, and, and equities are cheaper than they have been. So from that point of view, that's a bit of a silver lining um, from this fund.